Hello and welcome. Hola. So I was reading today on Hacker News and I saw an interesting story that I thought you folks might be interested in and I could shed some light on the technology behind it. What was this story, you might ask? <laughs> Let me show you. So the story was this one. And it was a story put out by a Detroit station about how ne'er-do-wells are using either a jammer or a deauthentication piece of hardware, a deauthor, as they call them, to mess with Wi-Fi security. And it's a decent little article. Uh, it illustrates the, and it talks about the situation pretty well. But I thought it might be useful for us to go through and I can show you a little bit about what it does and that kind of the idea behind it and, and what the devices are and that kind of thing. So you can kind of have an idea what it is. So let's define the problem space, what our issue is. Let's look at what the device is that we can use to do it. Sorry, what the device is we can use to do it. And then let's talk about mitigation. How can we mitigate for this? You know, how can we solve this problem or at least mitigate the problem? We may not be able to solve it, but we can at least mitigate for it. Okay. Uh, as usual, I will put links in the description. So it, every, pretty much everything I show on screen here, I'm going to have a link in the description. If it was something just little, I might not. But anything of any note, I'll make sure there's a link for it. Uh, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. The usual YouTube thing, you know that. <laughs> I'm sure you heard it before. <laughs> but that's how we eat and breathe here on YouTube to do that kind of thing. And if you enjoy my content, I would appreciate a Patreon, but we'll talk about that later. Right now, Let's get to the D author. So what's the problem? The problem is this. You or me or someone has a camera. Here's a wise cam. I love wise cams. They rock. They're cheap and they work great. And you can have them bristling all around your house if you want and in the house, wherever you want. They're, they're actually wonderful. They, they're like 30, 40 bucks and they do a great job. But like most inexpensive cameras, they require Wi-Fi to do their job. For now, don't forget that we're not finished with it yet. Okay, <laughs> we'll get back to that. But for now, let's just say that it's going to use Wi-Fi. Okay, well, if it's using Wi-Fi, that means, duh, it has to connect to the Wi-Fi access point at your house or your business or wherever it's being used, right? Well, that's great. Normally, no problem. So many of these cameras, rings, the wise cameras, and a litany a mile long of AliExpress and Wish, and you know, there's a ton of these things. So what's the problem then? Ah, the problem is a de-authenticator or what's called a de-author. What are those? That's what a deauthor is. So I have used version three and version two of this. I have found both of them to be quite good and they work very well at what they do. So I am willing to recommend this company's product because I've used two of them. I have not used the version four, but this is the current version that they're making. I think it's the newest one they're making. Uh, it's 119 bucks. So they're not that expensive. And if you don't want to pay that much, you can get one of the older ones. If I scroll down here, notice that I've got uh, the maker focus one here, you know, 50 bucks. But something I want you to see is that that's got a strap on it, doesn't it? See that strap? So that little strap's telling you something. This thing is meant to be worn on your wrist as though it were a watch. Now, it's a pretty big watch. And of course, this one, this watch has a big antenna on it, too. <laughs> But uh, as you can see, I'll scroll back down again. Sorry, I don't mean to be scrolling so much, but let me pop this up for you too. Uh, as you can see, this one has a, no antenna that sticks out. So it's a little more subtle, I guess you might call it. But many D authors actually come with a wrist strap because they're designed to be worn as though they were a watch. You don't have to, obviously, but... The reason we're using these is because you're walking around a place doing a penetration test or a security audit, and you want to test to see if a camera can be knocked off and if they have proper mitigation strategy. It also does some other stuff too. It can do packet monitoring, other things. 
So the idea is you use this device, whichever one you've got, and you find a camera and you can then attack the camera with what's called de-authentication frames. This device sends those and it will reliably knock the camera off the network for sure. Now it's been patched. This actually has been fixed. This vulnerability has been fixed. However, many Wi-Fi cameras do not implement this functionality, the new repaired functionality. I'm afraid Internet of Things devices are just kind of known for not getting fixes applied to them, not getting their firmware updated, etc. Heck, some of them don't even have a way to do that. So be aware, it's very possible that a camera that you have that's Wi-Fi can get knocked offline. There is a possibility it can't, but it could. So basically, that's a de-author in a nutshell. Uh, it's not a jammer. De-authors are not jammers, okay? They don't jam anything. They basically send signals out that knock something off the network, but they do not try and jam anything. I've used jammers before. They are illegal in most countries. Well, a lot of countries. I guess I don't, I've never known if it's most or not. So I'll just say it's illegal in many places, okay? But if you have permission to use it, you have to have signed permission usually, at least in my experience, but you can use them, but you have to be given permission from the proper authorities. You, a homeowner can't just say, oh yeah, sure, use a jammer. Technically that's still, you could get in trouble. So anyway, long story short, I ain't a lawyer. So I'll leave that one to you if you're doing that kind of testing or something, but yeah, you can get jammers there, but careful using those. So let me show you another deauthor. Here's another type of deauthor. This isn't a wrist strap one. This is basically a USB-A or USB-C connection. So it can be used on a laptop or in some cases a phone or things like that. And again, they're not that expensive. This is 32 pounds. So it's not super expensive to, to get. And I also wanted to show you a couple other things this thing can do. So not only can it do deauthentication, but it can also do something kind of fun called beacon spamming. So again, if you're doing a wireless penetration test or you're testing some other thing, uh, what this can do is this will create fake networks on the Wi-Fi list. So, you know, when you go into a phone or into a computer, like the laptop or whatever, and you click on Wi-Fi and you get the big list of all the Wi-Fi networks in the area. Yeah, this thing can generate a whole bunch of fake networks and it'll look like it's a real network and then people will click on it and they'll try and connect to it, but they can't, there's nothing that you can't connect to it. So you might use that to delay them from finding a network that they can use, like just have a whole bunch of networks that have close to the same name. So people to try and hide an actual network that they might be able to use, or there's a whole variety of reasons why you might use this. Again, please don't go to Starbucks and do this for funsies. It could be bad. Okay. <laughs> don't do that. Bad, bad, bad. Don't do that. Uh, but yeah, this is very, this is useful for certain testing. And it can also do a thing called probe spanning, which is kind of interesting. Uh, this messes with the ability for the system to know where you are in the world. And I got you an article on it. Again, I'll leave the link in the description below if you want to go read it. But the deal is, please know what that says right there. All Wi-Fi devices you own are constantly broadcasting the name of every network they've ever connected to. Hint, hint. <laughs> so yeah, that it can spam these probe requests, basically just sit in there gibberish. It'll just send out gibberish. Uh, of all these different networks, and it will confuse the tracking systems as to what's going on. So anyway, that's another, don't, don't do that. It doesn't, it isn't really going to break anything, but unless you know what you're doing, you probably don't want to mess with probe spamming. But again, this could be useful for certain testing scenarios. Uh, again, be very careful. Please do not use these things at someone's business for funsies, okay? I know that uh, it used to be fun to have the remote control watch and go to Best Buy or Magnolia Hi-Fi and change the channels on all the Sony TVs. And then the salesman comes over and switches them back. And just as soon as they switch them back, you change them again or turn them off. You know, I know that we used to do stuff like that. I certainly used to be a practical joker like that. But this isn't a practical joke. You're actually you're actually 
infringing the ability of their security system to work. So you could get, I could see where you could get in actual trouble doing this if you were to do that. So please, unless you have permission, don't go messing with that. If it's your own house, obviously you can do whatever you want probably, but uh, be careful even in apartment buildings. I've run into that too, where I've had friends uh, that do penetration testing for a living and people in an apartment have asked them to come in and the apart they have to get permission from the apartment manager or the apartment owning company to do the physical audit because there's some parts of the apartment system that they have to test. So you gotta be really careful because this thing, you know, you can get you in trouble. Now I got you a couple other links too. Uh, if you're interested, gotta find it here. <laughs> There we go. So this is the actual homepage for the Deauthor software and hardware. Uh, this is basically the software. You can go get it from GitHub. And then this actually explains the features and stuff like that for it. So I wanted to make sure you got the link to the like most popular of the, the bunch. There's probably other ones out there too, but this is the one that's pretty popular. So I'll make sure you have a link to that as well. Now, how do you mitigate this problem? Well, the mitigation strategies are pretty easy, actually. They're not, they're not particularly difficult. Uh, you can get from this Maltronics folks a detector. What does the detector do? The detect detector literally detects this type of attack. So when you're not being the authenticate attack, it'll actually be green. But if you do get attacked, it'll go red. So there are ways to detect this attack ongoing. There are ways to do that. Uh, it's just a matter of having the detector installed. How much that mitigates it, eh, I don't know. That I'll leave that one to you. You would at least know, you would be aware of the fact that you're being attacked. And deauthentication can be used for a variety of purposes, including trying to gather stuff for breaking someone's Wi-Fi password and things like that, possibly. So there could be some benefit in having a detector so you can tell if someone in your apartment building or something is trying to deauthenticate your network so it can re-authenticate over and over and over again. That's one reason we might do that, right? We kick a machine off the network and then we force it to re-authenticate again then we kick it off the network and we force it to re-authenticate again and you can capture that packet going back and forth and by capturing that packet going back and forth as you can imagine that could be useful information what's another mitigation what's a more direct mitigation i didn't even make a link for this because it's just straightforward don't use wi-fi if you want, don't use Wi-Fi, just use straight ethernet, just use wired network. Heck, you can even power the cameras. If you get cameras that support power over ethernet, you have to have a switch that does that too, that can provide the power to your cameras. But all you have to do then is just run one ethernet cable. You don't even have to run power to them because it'll run the power over the ethernet. Depends on the camera if it can do that though, just FYI, you have to make sure you get the right soft, the right stuff. But yeah, that's a very valid mitigation. Just don't use Wi-Fi. Always use wired. A lot more work though. And generally those kind of cameras are more expensive and you got to have a switch. So I'll leave that one to you, whether that's a valid strategy for you. It also makes it harder to install them as you can imagine, because you got to run wires. And that does mean that you may not be able to always put them exactly where you want them. I'll leave that one to you though. Wi-Fi is awful convenient, right? Now... Another strategy on these WISE cams is this. So here I am at the tech specs for WISE. And if I scroll down, here's your mitigation. Local storage. That's a gig. That's a thing. So what this does is it takes a micro SD card and sticks it in the back of that camera. So now what it's going to do is not only is it going to send the information over Wi-Fi, it's also going to save the information, the surveillance footage that it catches onto the micro SD card. Now it doesn't have infinite space on the micro card. So what's going to end up happening is uh, it's going to cycle through. So I think it's like every week or two weeks it'll run out. I can't remember off the top of my head. It, it's smart enough to know if it's running out because obviously 128 gig is not as big as 64. So you may not have enough space for a week or something. So it'll basically cycle through them. Uh, but be aware that this is a valid mitigation strategy. And these are Mexican prices. That's in pesos, not in uh, 
in dollars. He's saying that isn't four hundred and fifty-five dollars. That's four hundred and fifty-five pesos. So divide it by twenty, and that'll get you what the price is in the U.S. So bottom line, though, is that this is a very valid strategy because even if they knock you off the network, your surveillance footage is still going to be saved on the SD card. Very cool. Uh, I use this all the time. My friends use this all the time because that way the camera cannot really be taken offline. And especially if you have a wonky Wi-Fi or the camera's like on the edge of the range of the Wi-Fi, this is actually really useful because rain can actually affect that if the camera's too far away. Uh, then there's other things. I've run into people, they shouldn't, but I've run into people that have microwave ovens that'll screw up their Wi-Fi range. That's bad. That means there's probably something wrong with their microwave, but that's a whole other topic for discussion. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, long story short, those are three mitigations. DOS detector to detect the hack itself in progress. Just don't use Wi-Fi. Use wired, dir. And many cameras support a micro SD card that goes into them so it can save to a local storage format rather than always having to save to the cloud. Not all cameras do though, so you'll have to check, but the wise cameras do. And that's one thing I like about them. Again, they're cheap. They're like 30, 40 bucks, but they actually come with a lot of cool features. And one of those is this being able to use the micro SD. And I've actually had to do that before. I've had to use the actual micro SD because the Wi-Fi didn't get it or for whatever reason it got deleted on the cloud, but it was actually on the little micro SD card. So obviously you don't normally go up and pull this out of the machine, out of the camera, unless you really need it, especially on outdoor cameras where you have to go climbing up on ladders and stuff, right? So anyway, that's it. That's all there is to it. So we talked about the authentication attack, how it can knock cameras offline and make it so that ne'er-do-wells can actually get their job done without being seen and, and surveilled and saved so you can't get the video. We talked about what the thing was that does it, the de-authenticator, the de-author, these little guys. And we talked about some of the things they can do other than deauthentication and mitigation strategies as well. So one more time, I'm going to have links to all this stuff in the description of the video. And like, share, and subscribe as per usual. And don't forget also that uh, if you'd like to support me in my work and help me to start making some good money off YouTube as my major source of money, which I would like to do, uh, I would love to have your Patreon subscription please. And I, I, we do that for even a dollar a month. I don't ask much, but if you would like to help with my mission and help with these videos, I would really appreciate it. I'll make sure you get credit at the end of the video if that is the case. And other than that, I think we're good. Thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed and learned some and uh, hopefully we'll see you again. Have a good one and bye-bye.